This week in Nerf, we've got new leaked blasters, a story that never ends, and a blast from the past. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Now, before we dive into the news this week, I do just want to say that today is March 24th, and last year on March 25th was the first episode of This Week in Nerf. So we are just at about a year, and that's kind of awesome that we've been doing this for a year and to see the growth of the channel and all of the goodness that has come from this. I am thoroughly enjoying doing it and I just want to thank all of you for being a part of this and making this grow the way it has. Actually, let's go ahead and pop the patrons down below right now and you can see everyone who has pledged to the Patreon that we talked about last week. Thank you so much to every single one of you. Every single week they will be down there scrolling across the screen as we talk about the news and all the goodness or badness that comes with it. But Thank you so much, everyone, for your support, whether it be uh, through just watching, through sharing, through Patreon, whatever. I love doing this, and I can't wait to do more and more as the years go on. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the actual news. Now, there are some new Star Wars blasters from the Han Solo movie that have just had a couple images shared, and this came to us from Caleb Amos on Facebook in the Nerf Modders Welcome group. Uh, we have a blaster for... Kira or Shira, I I'm not entirely certain how to pronounce that. I will find out once the movie's out. Uh, and Chewbacca. Now, the I'm going to say Kira for now. I'm sure someone will know, and please let me know in the comments down below if there is a proper way that is known to pronounce that name. Um, this blaster looks very visually interesting. I, I, I think it's a cool looking blaster shell, and I think it's going to be very popular amongst aesthetic modders, uh, steampunk people, LARPers, all those kinds of groups, it's going to be very popular regardless of its performance. Now, we often have seen movie tie-in blasters be underwhelming, and this very well could be the case for this blaster. But, I mean, fingers crossed, maybe it's got a decent sized plunger tube on the inside that we can use to make perform better. I, we don't know a whole lot beyond just what we see in these pictures, so I don't want to go too far into speculation on these just yet outside of the way they look, and I dig the way they look, especially this one. But the other one is the Chewbacca Blaster. Now, it's not a bowcaster. It's, uh, it looks more like a standard kind of blaster from Star Wars, and it does have a new stock with a stock point, so we can take this and put it on other blasters, and it looks somewhat like a scar stock if you play like Fortnite or PUBG or any of the games that are popular right now tend to have scars in them. Uh, that is the kind of look is this somewhat has, but as for the blaster itself and its performance, it is a pump action Springer. We're going to venture a guess that it's a Springer, pretty certain, but there's no magazine well, no magazine, it only comes to six darts, so it's it's likely not going to have a high capacity, and it's likely not going to have the greatest performance. We can venture a guess that it's going to be some smart AR system that will utilize uh, a, an already made blaster type just put in a larger cell something akin to maybe a triad or if we look back at like the rocket raccoon blaster i think it may be something similar to that which may be a bit underwhelming but at least it looks cool right i mean that's kind of the appeal of these star wars toy crossovers with the nerf line is they have that aesthetic appeal that we like from those movies and that universe that we're fans of so I think these will probably sell just fine with kids and with the target demographic and with collectors. Uh, I don't think that will be an issue. And that might be why they don't focus so much on making sure they perform uh, phenomenally for all of these, these tie-in blasters. But all, like I said, I don't want to get too far into speculation. I just wanted to leave you with those images and the fact that they are coming. And when we do have more information, we will talk about that now. Just like the song... Toys R Us kids don't want to grow up. This story doesn't want to end. Toys R Us. <sighs> There's a fundraiser now. Now this is not a fundraiser from the Toys R Us company or anyone officially affiliated with it. Uh, this is coming from a CEO of the company that owns the Bratz line of toys, Isaac Larian, uh, who donated 200 million to a GoFundMe campaign that they started. 
uh, in hopes of raising $1 billion to put a bid in for some of the assets of Toys R Us so that they can keep the store going under their control or their company. Um, and there's been some mixed responses to this from people. I definitely want to let people know that this is, this is not a sure thing. This is not, if it reaches a billion dollars, Toys R Us is saved magically. No, that is not the case. There is no guarantee in this. It, it is a business venture. It even says so in the GoFundMe that this is not a charitable donation. This is uh, a potential business venture for their company that you are helping them create. So it essentially be you donating towards trying to keep Toys R Us alive and making them money. Now, if you like Toys R Us and you want Toys R Us to stay around and you understand all these things, that's fine. I just want to make sure everyone understands these things, that, that nothing is guaranteed. This is not a sure thing. It's all up in the air. If they're even able to raise $1 billion, that's a lot of money. That is an insane amount of money. Uh, so I, I will be very surprised if this happens. Uh, also important to note is that the Canadian Toys R Us is actually, uh, rumors are going around that they may be trying to acquire maybe the top 100, the top 200 performing U.S. Toys R Us stores and keep them under their control so that Toys R Us can stay alive here in the U.S. as well. So this story just continues to go off the rails and, and, and it doesn't want to end. It, Toys R Us doesn't want to die. Just plain and simple, that, that's, that's the company does not want to go down, and that's, um, it's interesting. They are facing lawsuits from uh, various companies, potentially Hasbro as well. Uh, rumors are going around that they are going to recall all of their inventory rather than letting Toys R Us liquidate it for uh, far less than it's worth because they owe Hasbro millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. So we may not even get those liquidation sales that we've been looking forward to. So there's just so much going on with this that it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And I'm very curious what's going to happen with this. I, I've, I thought we were done talking about it, but I, who knows when we'll be done? Who knows? Hopefully next week we won't have to talk about this because there's so much other stuff that I am looking forward to talking about. There's a lot of uh, third party community stuff that's being built and put out that I'm very excited to talk about and I have plans to talk about next week. So I think regardless of what happens, that's gonna be our focus next week is the community third party uh, aspect of the hobby because there's a lot of cool stuff going on right now. But let's move on. Uh, I, I, the reason I'm saving that for next week is because this week seems to be very big on first party or, or big retailer news and that is followed up by the fact that KB Toys is making a comeback. Now, those of you that are younger may not have ever experienced a KB Toys, but if you're in your 20s or older, you probably saw KB Toys at a mall when you were growing up. And KB Toys was a mall-based toy store that sold all kinds of things from video games to, to uh, whatever. Um, and it was super jam-packed and just tons of toys crammed into small spaces and it was always fun to go into. So this for me is a bit of a nostalgic kick and I think it's kind of cool, but what's happening is a company named Strategic Marks LLC has acquired the rights to KB Toys, the brand. Uh, as they already closed down years ago, they now have the rights to reopen under that brand name and, and lawfully do all of that. So they have been working behind the scenes to get everything in motion to reopen KB Toys and, and develop a business plan that revolves not only around brick and mortar locations, which I would assume will still be in malls as that was kind of their thing, um, but also online retailing. And they're talking about how they want to change the way people buy online We'll see what that means. It could just be PR marketing talk. We don't know. But regardless, another toy store, if Toys R Us truly is done in the US, another toy store coming back here would be great to fill that void. Um, I, 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 like I said, this is a nostalgia kick for me. I enjoyed KB Toys as a kid. I have good memories of going to the mall with family, seeing the KB Toys walk around. I can still remember what was on the aisles of those. So this is very much a nostalgia play by this company, I think, for a lot of people. And it may work for them, especially with the timing. Because of the timing of the Toys R Us issues, they're actually expediting the process and aiming to have stores open by this Christmas season. 
if that happens, it'll be interesting. Uh, they do have a Twitter account up, which is where you see the image I, I have sharing right now from. If you want to go follow them and see, kind of keep up with what they're doing, you can definitely do that. But I will keep you all appraised of the situations as they continue to progress. Now let's get back to the community for our mod of the week. This is the mod that I wanted to share last week. And I am so excited to share it with all of you. If you haven't seen this, I'll be very surprised. But just in case, this is from Mr. Heath Pants. And this is the MHP-15, a fully automatic, scratch-built and designed, full auto flywheel blaster. I said full auto twice, but emphasis. Uh, that uses katana mags for short darts with a flywheel system. And that is so cool. I absolutely love it. This thing is... Uh, Originally inspired by Sombra's Blaster, if I remember correctly, from uh, Overwatch, which I personally love that design. Sombra's one of my favorite characters from that game. And when I saw this, when I saw that Heath was doing this, I was like, oh, I, I need this. I need this in my life. It's amazing. And it's just, it's so cool. And it performs well by the video that he's posted. I'll go ahead and have a link down below to the uh, firing demo as well as the Reddit post for the images and, and the, the conversation around this blaster because it is a magnificent piece of work. And the best part, all of the files are available for free for everyone. So you can start printing and making your own one of these if you want. And that, oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. I love this thing so much. One thing I will say, if you're gonna print this out and make one of your own and run it at a public game, please, be considerate of what and how you paint this blaster with because it does have a very um, real steel kind of vibe to it if you paint it to look that way because it is based off something that, that does look that way and I don't want anyone to run into potential issues if they paint it up to look all, you know, realistic because it already has a realistic, semi-realistic silhouette to it I don't want people to run into issues. That's just my, that's my personal safety, you know, PSA, but I love this thing. It's so cool. Ah, so excited, but please go check that out. Show them some love because it is fantastic, but let's move on to the video of the week. And this one comes to us from Aldos. Now, Aldos has started something that I think is absolutely phenomenal, and this is his weekly Nerf War Roundup series. He started last week, and every week he's going to be doing a video that details and links to all of the Nerf gameplay videos on YouTube for that week. And this is phenomenal to me because I love gameplay. You know I love sharing it with all of you, but I don't share it with you every single week because there's various things that are interesting in terms of videos that I wanna share and not just focus on one solitary thing as much as I love it. But he's doing that, he's picking that up and he is sharing all of the gameplay with you. So if you want a fix of watching some Nerf gameplay, Aldos has got you covered. I highly recommend adding this to your weekly watching list if you have one, it is, uh, I know I will be looking forward to it as well every single week. So please go check that out. Uh, the link will be down below. Let me know what you think of all of the news this week. The, the Toys R Us story not ending. Uh, KB Toys coming back. Are you excited? Do you think, why do we need another brick and mortar store? Uh, what do you think about the Star Wars blasters? And then mod of the week? video of the week, let me know down below if there are any that you think should be considered for next week. I've gotten some really cool submissions already from people suggesting things, so I definitely love hearing from all of you in that regard. And again, thank you for all the patrons that pledged already to support this show and help it grow and do more and more. It is already helping me do things that I'm excited to talk with you all about in the future. Now, if you wanna see the video of the week, Go ahead and click right over here because we are at the end of the episode. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the subscribe button for in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.